Catherine Boyle and Ian Lee. How are you doing, Catherine? How's it going? It's all good today, but I've only been up for about an hour, so anything could happen. OK, not bad. And Ian, how are we doing over there? Yeah, um, this is, you know, I was I thought yes. the last one of the time has gone for me. Right. And yeah. I thought the last one of these was about six months ago, genuinely. Mm. And then we found it. How is that? How is that even possible? Time is so elastic at the moment. It's weird, yes. man. It's bananas. Yeah, it's it's uncomfortably weird. You, you, you don't know. My, sorry, go on. You don't know what you did yesterday. You're like, was that yesterday or a week ago? Who cares? I, whatever. I went for my booster, my booster jab on uh, Wednesday. And they said, when was your last jab? I said it was September. And they looked and went, no, it was in June. I've got no idea what's going on. This is yeah. awful. It's like uh, there's three days a month, but each day is 6,000 hours. It's very confusing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's exactly I get right. Uh, let, let's do a little catch up, though. You know, it has been uh, one year ago that uh, we were talking during this marathon. We were talking about sobriety. And uh, Ian, how is it going? I am uh, 13 months and two weeks clean and sober. Well, right. yeah, yeah. Very nice. That was recent. Yeah, no, no, it's good. I'm hitting the AA and the NA meetings. I'm doing face to face meetings primarily. I got a sponsor. I'm working it. I've got I'm doing my amends list. You know, this is good stuff. Turns out this is better. Who would have turns thought? Turns out, turns out, turns out this is and, better. And now Catherine is allowed to do hard drugs, right? Because of the team. <laughs> turns out in order to align the universe. Yeah, yeah I've got to go in there hard. Turns out cocaine's pretty good. <laughs> Very boring. He was I, right. <laughs> right. Uh, we were we were talking to people about I, I, I think this is a very interesting question, and I wish like I, I knew it with anybody that I dated. If your exes got together and uh, agreed uh, about your personality, what would they say are your pros and what would they say are your cons? We'll start with Catherine. What would your exes say about you? Annoying was a word that came up a lot. Annoying. Annoying. <laughs> Annoying. You still have a thing about that, don't you? Yeah, I do. Because, you know, they're partly they must be right. They, they must be part of me because I think it's because when I go into something, I get very enthusiastic and maybe that's the thing. So right. it could be a pro. It could be a con. If you start to dislike me, it becomes annoying, I imagine. But if I'm doing something you like me to do, probably brilliant. Um. Is it because like what they, they you're too focused on something supposedly or yeah, and too I excited? Also, I get very I get thrilled to bits and I start to see all these different possibilities and this is going to be it. And, you know, I'm a dreamer. I think it's that I think it's the fact that I'm a bit of a dreamer and I try even in shitty situations. I try to find something that could be it. You know, this could right. be it, um, which probably can be a bit aggravating if you're not a Pollyanna kind of person, you know? And is right. it is it genuine, the Pollyanna part? I think it's survival. Mm. I think it's survival because what else? I, well, I, I accept that everything's shit and it's probably not going to change. So, no, I was, I was trying to find something, something that I can pin my hope on. Otherwise, yeah, I get when I go, when I go, uh, you know, dark, it, it gets quite dark. And uh, I fright and, and that I think frightens other people because they're not used to me being like that. You know what I discovered that because um, when I go dark, I can go really dark also. And I've been working the last few years on how to not continue if if I'm dark, not go more dark because mm -hmm. that's that's the cycle. And, and the uh, the snowball just gets bigger and bigger because I realize that whatever feeling I'm having now, that's in my head. That's the feeling forever. So if yeah. I'm sad, I'm sad forever. Everything that I thought I was is gone. Um, there's no there's no lot. There's nothing to be funny about, whatever. And and when I'm I'm high or in that energetic state, I'm like, we have this energy every day. Tomorrow is going to be like this. The next. So now I have to find a little more perspective, a little faster. So uh, it's it's a lot easier going like I know there's a, an alternative. And now I'm fighting in my head going, how could there be an alternative? This feeling is so strong. I have to be right. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. remember when you weren't feeling like this to remind yourself that there is another way here. And it's like, well, guess if I said there was going to be a look for it now, let's just take a shower and think about it later. That's good enough. Yeah. Yeah. I also find and it's something you've talked about a lot on the show that that thing of <clears throat> nothing is happening now. I find that really useful when I start to spin out. It's like, right. OK, so what can I deal with now? Nothing is happening now. So it's like you say, you could chill out, take a shower, have a walk or something. 
Right. Because nobody is actually beating you now. It's your brain reliving that. And your brain is telling you everything that you're doing, everything that you're thinking is actually happening. So stop mm-hmm. thinking about it. And you're not in that torture. But that's hard. Yeah, yeah it is. It's tricky. It's tricky. Ian, you know. Yeah. What would people say about you that you did? Uh, I'm, I'm up until very recently, I, I have been terrible in relationships. I have not been a good partner. I, my, you know, my behavior and my attitude has been terrible. It's kind of tied in with the addiction, but that doesn't excuse it. You know, I'm, I was a shit partner. Um, the good thing is I'm tall, so I can reach <laughs> high up on shelves. <laughs> the number of times I'm in a supermarket and an old lady would say, could you get that box up there? I love it. I love it. Yeah. I can and then they that. go, you would make a great partner bye yeah, yeah. i like to yes, consider one. those people exes but all right <laughs> um, i would what i'm saying yeah, moment. I, I would fucking do that for exes i'm not going to be with a partner go you fucking stand on a box and get it i'm not going to do that <laughs> um i would i would I, i've never broken up with someone i've never said hey do you know what um mm-hmm. this isn't working i think we should split i would just act like a dick and get more dickish until they went you know this is over I don't want to see you anymore. And I would go, okay. okay. And the cunning part about that is they think that they're they're doing themselves a favor. Oh, I'm empowering them. I'm (laughs) I'm a big fan of empowering women. And that's exactly what I'm doing by not treating them very well. I picture even pushing it like, are you sure? I can shape up. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) I have done that a couple of times. Listen, I am not proud of my history and partnerships. I am, you know, I'm working on that and I'm really, you know, I, I, I kind of learned that from my dad. And again, I'm not using that as an excuse. I have to take responsibility for the way I've, I've behaved. And, you know, finally, I'm kind of working on that stuff. So what would you say is different in the last year in your family life? Is that uh, easy to explain? Do you know what some I, I got? It's interesting you're talking to Mike about being diagnosed as autistic. I got diagnosed as ADHD and bipolar. So I was really interested. I know it's different to to Mike's experience, but it was really interesting. So I have suddenly, everything makes sense. Everything, you know, why I was thick at school, why I, why I couldn't sit in a lesson, why I, you know, one of the, the things about some neurodiverse people is you get into a relationship and for the first three weeks, it's love. This is it. I'm going to marry them. And then it just stops that, that kind of attraction and excitement, um, stops. So, Knowing that, I think, ultimately, is going to make me, you know, a better partner. I can, I can explain that. I can I can be aware of it. And, you know, I, I And what I do you do, though? Do you say, hey, it's OK now that you bore me? Uh, how does that help you? <laughs> well, no, I can just be aware that, that my the first f- flush is not genuine. You know, I'm just getting these chemicals fired into my brain. It's mm. not genuine. It's not real. Slow down a little bit. Take a step back. I just started journaling. I got my I got my book here. I'm taking notes and it just helps me go. This is not real. Just come back a little bit. Okay. I like that. The 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 first one's not real. Like yeah. just so you, I freedom is having options. So when everything feels so one way and you can actually come up with and interrupt your thoughts and say, there might be another way here yeah. starts feeling like a little bit of freedom, just that there might be an option. I'm willing to believe that there could be an option. We're not agreeing to anything, but there could be something else is really, really cool. It's what you both said as well about the moods. I'm well enough now. You know, I'm, I've this week I've been fucking off my face on bipolar. I've been up here and it's been quite scary. But what you said, Hamda, I know that's not it. This too shall pass, even the good stuff. I know that that yeah. isn't real. And I know that, or th- that this isn't permanent and this low where I want to kill myself. And, I'm, you know, that isn't permanent. And the, it, it moves on. Five years ago, I thought that was it. I'm going to be miserable forever, you know. And I know that's not true now. And what's funny is you can, you can really lean into it because you're, you're like, at least I'll know what's coming. If I could just be miserable every day, then I'll be consistent. And this up and down with like a lot of energy, a little energy. I'm upset. I'm sad. like, why do I have to go through a rainbow of everything? And then it's like, oh, because the rainbow exists. I can't be happy all the time. That's psychotic. Yeah. That's fake. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a huge thing. You, I mean, you've noticed. I don't want to fucking talk. Last time I talked about me the whole time, I'm. You're well, you guest, are a fascinating Ian. character. You're, the, you're a guest. Yeah, but Catherine is also a guest and she is my queen. Catherine, <laughs> can you shut queen. Ian up? What's up no. with you? <laughs> Catherine, well, how well, do you used to do it at work? Well, 
Put but that was when up, I was stop. <laughs> um, the hand. Yeah, that was when I was I was actually employed as a radio producer, so he had to obey the hand. Now he just right. ignores it. Um, Have so you tried the- this? Hands up, finger on the mouth, everyone quiet. I'm talking now. And then you just talk. <laughs> Is that the rhyme? I didn't know the rhyme. No, I it do. rhymes. If it's 530 in the morning and you've been up for a long time, that's a rhyme. <laughs> I don't know if I you know you the say, rules. I heard you say on a podcast the other day, crisscross applesauce. I've never heard that one either. Did they well, make that? Is that a brand name? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> jump. <laughs> um, so while Ian's been working on uh, on being a better partner, I've been working on being single. <laughs> Oh. My, my marriage imploded <laughs> over the last year, but actually it's not over the last year. It's been over several years, but right. you know, lockdown and stuff kind of magnifies it and you don't have the distractions that perhaps you would have had before. So that's what's happened with me. And it's okay. You know, it's okay. Um, in fact, the reason why I'm so doled up at 10 o'clock in the morning is because I'm going to a family gathering with his family, with my, oh, wow. ch- you know, because we've got children together. So right. right. We're trying to keep it cool and it is cool, um, but it's going to be a little odd today. Who had to who did somebody have to sit somebody down and then the other person says, yeah, no shit. It was it that easy for lack we, of a better word. We had kind of danced along the edge of it for a long time. And before lockdown, we talked more specifically about what we could do. What, you know, there was a lot of okay. kind of what are we going to do? I don't know. And then it goes away for a few more months. There was a lot right. of that. And I think a lot of people find that right. Yeah, well, I find that I found it um, before my divorce. I and I think it's safe to speak for how she was feeling. I know I, I'm thinking, yeah, we're becoming more friendly, but, you know, as opposed to lovers, but yeah. eventually we'll get we just have to sit down and talk about it. I don't want to do it today. And yeah. I'm thinking she's thinking the same thing. Well, I don't want to do it today either, but something needs fixed until finally yeah. it's like, OK, enough. Exactly that. But like five years of that every kind of six months or so and right. also looking at that other person and thinking oh my god he's he's disappearing and so am i you know i'd hear him laughing on the phone and think i haven't heard him laugh like that with mm. me for a long time and mm. things become obvious don't they um but then you know when there was the prospect of god knows how long inside and you know i was trying we, we just tried to make things normal for the kids for as long as possible um it turns out that's not the way either because it came as a huge shock to them <laughs> mm. But there's uh, no good way of doing it, right? Did, did you say like, God damn it, they, they said the kids realize anyway. <laughs> I knew you didn't. I knew my, it. <laughs> my kids, when um, when I got divorced, and um, I mean, they were probably like six and eight, and we sat them down and it, we were dr- absolutely dreading it. And we said, guys, you know, mummy and I, we, we're going to get divorced and I'm going to move out. And the boys went, does that mean we get two houses? I went, yeah, it does. And they both <laughs> went, yes. <laughs> they were thrilled. <laughs> And then you're like, well, this is good news for me because I don't have to deal with more emotions today. But also, are they psychotic? They're fucking <laughs> insane. But they, but you know, they've kind of latched onto the thing. They've they've been really cool about it. Who knows? They'll, they'll be in therapy in 10, 15 years. We all know that's the case. Um, but they get the fact that uh, we've been separated for maybe three or three or four years, four years maybe. They get the fact there's two houses. They get the fact that we get on with each other. They get the fact it's double Christmas and double holidays, you know, and and, and that's not what it's all about. But but they they get it. So it but maybe work. it's what it's all about when you're a kid, because it, no one's asking you about the mortgage payments and no one's, you know, talking to you about like the emotional strife that this is causing. It's like, just tell me where I'm supposed to live. Yeah. And yeah. then drive me to the thing I'm supposed to do and want to yeah. do my little babies. I love and but but I'm way further down the line than Catherine is, you know, and her kids. So right, it can be all right. It can be. How long ago was the decision, Catherine? Well, uh, he moved out last summer, so like June, July. Okay. So you know we're still aligning, and it's it's uh, obviously that we keep coming up every now and again. Something will come up, and it's usually someone else has a problem. Someone else has made an assumption, you know. Um, But uh, we've kind of got the attitude of we know what's going on. We're okay. Fuck everyone else, really. Um, right. And we're still a team in that respect, you know. And I keep saying to the girls, we're still mom and dad. And you can't get one past me because I will tell him, and vice versa, you know. So right. there's none of that going on. Do you, do you cry? Right. Do you cry about it now, or are you doing all right now? No, I, I'm okay. Could, could you cry for us now? You know, <laughs> <just get> some, <laughs> yeah. 
we're trying to I make cry, a moment. I cry when I worry about, you know, when I, I see my kids in pain and stuff like that. But um, and in the first few months, you know, when you're making more room in your house because there's an ex, there's ex, there's extra room and you come across things like photographs of how we were and stuff. I cry. But I cry for those people then. I don't feel like we're the same. Um, and uh, oh, God, I'm going to cry. No, but um, it, it, it's getting easier. The it's Wendy's like- cheering. The Wendy's cheering. Yeah, go, you go, I go. Mean, I mean, good morning. First of all, I do want to say it's cheating because the two guests are clearly in a different time zone. I'm in Texas. It's <laughs> 430 right. in the morning. I was Texas, like, you guys look wow. wide awake. That looks like sunshine coming in the windows. Yeah, yeah. So nice to meet you. And also, fuck you, too, for looking <laughs> fuck, so fuck good. Fuck you, Wendy. Because we- uh, Hi, who- Keith. Oh. And how are you? Hi, Wendy. Sorry. <laughs> okay. For those who don't know, we get sent like this little booking slot. Do you want to be on the show? Pick a time zone. Why did you pick 4.30 a.m.? Because I'm a team player and I love my friends and I want to have their back. The first time we did this marathon show, the first time I did it, I was living in Astoria, like two blocks away from where their studio used to be, Mm -hmm. their old studio. So Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll walk over my fucking pajamas at the time I was doing a lot of cocaine. So I was like, (laughs) I'll be up anyway. (laughs) Um, My kind of girl. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, and so that kind of became a thing where I'm like, this is a fun challenge. Can you wake up at four o'clock in the morning and make one complete sentence? Can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> and then on top of that, if you can be kind of funny at least once in an hour, you're fucking crushing it. Oh, shit. Uh, Women so to be funny. I, uh, it's a, com- it's it's a comedy. It's a comedy. That's Catherine. why I started to cheer for crying, because you don't <laughs> be funny, but you just, you know what I mean? Like, be it's drama. Yeah. I don't know if you can see I turned on my lights. Beautiful. Oh, this is a show. String lights. Thank you. <laughs> You're I, don't welcome. Know, I don't know what I can do to make it entertaining. I'm sorry, guys. Fuck. We're having a show. I got on creams. You can see this. <laughs> that is, like, I can shiny, see that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I'm like cleaning my face, talking to Xerxes. <laughs> uh, Catherine, I remember um, when me and my ex, when she was, you know, finishing the last uh, of her packing. And then she's, you know, hugging me goodbye and crying. And then I feel like it's my job. I have to console you. And I'm like, isn't this your fucking idea? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the thing, right? So we, we that happened. That happened, you know, a, co- a few times, especially when you're kind of, OK, off to daddy's house with the kids. And, you know, there's tears in my eyes and stuff. But, yeah, it's uh, God, it's so much. I love it's it the when thing. they we, go now. We, yeah, it. exactly. It's, silence but also um i don't wake up with dread in the pit of my stomach anymore and that i guess is a good thing so uh, onwards is the thing yeah i i do think like the first year even though you know logically it's a good idea this is this was coming it was meant to be in this way and this will get better that first year is a heartbreak that's what Mm -hmm. heartbreaks feels like it's you had been planning your life and i'm speaking for myself you'd be planning your life this way and now the huge adjustment while doing regular shit of every day yeah. is just I need to I need to breathe. Let's let's just focus on breathing. And, and, I, and I'm still living in the family home. Right. Which is great because I'm you know, I'm the one that's mo- mostly with the kids, but I, I can't change anything too much because I'm trying to keep it stable for them. So I've still got pictures in the house of, mm. you know, that we chose together. And it's like just this constant little reminders. But now, it, rip it, rip it all out. Yeah. Paint everything. Cut out the kids face. into the shed in the garden. Yeah. Poke his eyes out with a pen or something. Like do something yeah. for Burn you. It's self, you're like, what are you doing? It's self-care Sunday. Just fucking <laughs> making devil horns on their dad and all the pictures. Like, is mom drinking? <laughs> I had a piece of paper and like the uh, the talk bubble and cartoons and put it next to his face. And I would be like, fuck, you I'm a kids. bad man. <laughs> fuck you, kids. <laughs> Daddy, daddy doesn't love you. Daddy, daddy, off you go for the weekend, but he does not love you. Okay, I'm away you. and happy. <laughs> like that. I'm probably in the pub again. Yeah. <laughs> I love the pub. And then mom says, I love you, kids. Boy, Joe, Wendy, you come in here and just light a fire, don't you? I love it. <laughs> oh, man. In well, the I'm- chat. Joe Spa- Joe Spaziano says, does anyone know how old Catherine Catherine's kid? Yeah, we fucking know how old Catherine's kids are. None of your business, Joe Spaziano. I sometimes have trouble remembering, but yeah, I, I kind of know how old they are. They're about this big. Is that, does that help? <laughs> yes. You're sitting down, so pretty small. Yeah. Pretty small, they say. <laughs> so far, yeah. But okay. I hear they grow. <laughs> uh, Wendy, oh, no. we're asking guests, what if, what uh, of your exes, if they all got together, but what would they say about you? What would the pros and cons of Wendy Starling be 
if these assholes all got together? Well, the pros and the con, uh, it's the same thing. It's the uh, bipolar. It's both. It's oh. the good and the bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking yes, Wendy. I'm with real, you. Real fun, bitch. I will. We do you want to do butt stuff in the morning? Great. I'm in. Let's do it. Uh, right. Also, I might cry immediately afterwards. So it's just it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I got string I, lights. Now I'm like, I wonder if I have this. I like string lights. And, yeah, you know, and I painted and this in the morning. Blue. Yeah, yeah like I love morning stuff butt in the sex. Morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's a bipolar 100 percent because it's like this bitch is really fun. And then I'll wake up one day and it's like, oh, this is not the same person I led into my house. I'm you guys. <sighs> I'm in Texas. I'm in a bedroom. I'm living with a guy that I met four months ago, my boyfriend on our, on our second date. He we our schedules were just really opposite and we had a heart. We like each other. And he was like, just move in. I just bought a three bedroom house. I have a huge house and I don't there's nothing in there. You moved into his house. Yeah. After like our second date, he's like, yeah, I have a third bedroom. Make it your studio. Do whatever you want. So I was like, all right, you fucking you said it. So I have like a teal wall. I put string lights up. I got Barbie somewhere on the house. <laughs> now, did you did you confirm the next day or were you like you said? And here are my clothes. Uh, yeah. Well, and my cat's here. He brought my cat. Uh, like, oh, if the cat's here, you'll stay in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's oh, an for anchor. Sure. Mm hmm. Anchor yeah. cats, they call it. Yeah. yeah. But when Wendy, when, because I got diagnosed as bipolar last year, have you had like a huge, I mean, I don't know if you're a medicine shit, but have you had like a huge downward swing in this guy's house yet to the point where he's going, fucking hell, what the fuck have I done? Well, and here's the trick. You got to find someone that's also a little bit on the bipolar spectrum and he's oh, opposite. So he's more like, let's listen to Nick Cave and like be emo and just sit around and like, that's great. I love that. So he gets, it's really nice because he's more suicidally depressed and, and mentally mm, checks that out. Is, and, that is beautiful. That sound nice, yeah. And I tend to naturally run on like as if I'm on a little bit of Adderall when I'm not like I take an Adderall into a big sleep. So, okay. oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've got two people. So it's like it's like we're, we're like we're like a human speedball. He's heroin and I'm cocaine. And so it's, if we can get our uh, cycles to sync up, that's what we're trying to do. This, this, is the sexy, this is the horniest relationship I've ever heard in my life. This is insane. Like, I want to see a reality show of you guys. This is great. Yeah, it's pretty fucking wild. Yeah. And are you, are you exclusive? Yes. You're exclusive completely? Yes. And no sex work? Or does no, that not I count? Stopped. No, I stopped all that shit. Oh, when was this? For him um, or bored of it? Well, for him, he didn't ask me to. We went out. So um, I like when I don't have to ask my girls that. And that is so right. sweet that they do it on their own. It's like, are you going to are you going to stop selling your pussy? I don't even have to ask you. <laughs> That's how I knew she was the one. She volunteered to stop selling gash on the Internet and in real life. It was really sweet of her. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was I, well, I moved. Part of the reason why I moved from St. Louis to Austin, because last year at this time I was in an attic in St. Louis trying to save money. Um, ah, it's Joe. Joe DeRosa, <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, guys. Hi, Hi Joe. Good morning. Jo Joe's just woken up for this. Hey, man. Nice yes. to see you. <laughs> yeah, so have I. No, but How I are you moved. guys? Good. Good. I'm telling you talking about, about selling pussy on the Internet. Well, I yeah, did, don't let me I, interrupt. I'm sorry. No. Hey, please join it. Uh, I. I like Joe and I look kind of like the same person Let me, with the glasses and like the hair. Um, no, my boyfriend here, we went out a couple times and when I moved to Austin because there's stand up here, but also a guy, a sugar daddy that I'd been with. I'd been his mistress for four and a half years, so I knew him from New York. So that was part of the reason that when I was like, well, and he was here and so I was like, this seems like a good match and Austin's a little more affordable than New York, so I can swing that for the next year right. before I figure out where I'm going. And then I went out with this guy a couple of times and this sounds so lame. But I was like, I was like, well, I don't think I want to I don't want to kiss anyone else. I was like, oh, I don't oh. want to be with anyone else. Aww. And so I made the decision. And before I did, I said, I just want to let you know, I'm about to lose about oh, three or four thousand dollars a month. So <laughs> you're going to have to pick up the slack. Uh, but Love yeah, yeah no, yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are those your vows? Yes. Yeah. Pick up the slack. <laughs> Super romantic. Right. Motherfucker. Pick up the slack. <laughs> and I pick up the slack. I mean, give me your credit card. Uh, Did he have any issues or any hesitation with that? Not really, because the thing it's all public, so it's not like his mom even went on. My no, TikTok with with, and, with him picking up the financial slack. No. Do you think I would make out with someone that couldn't possibly? Come on. Hello. You're still a fucking person. I know. 
<laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, I'm smart. I didn't I mean, yeah. I didn't I didn't survive this long by being a fucking idiot. <laughs> That's like a prerequisite. <laughs> Let me ask you no, guys something about about bipolar. Ian and Wendy, did illicit drugs help send yourself and you're just realizing this now? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I Wendy, I'm a cocaine addict, right? I'm in recovery and all of that shit. And um, oh, when I'm, fun. isn't it great? Yeah. And when I was getting diagnosed with bipolar and ADHD, um, the psychiatrist said, when you did cocaine, uh, did it focus you? And I said, yeah, it focused me. He said, what did it focus you on? I said, pornography and wanking, but <laughs> it did, it did it. it I, I could focus, you know, I could focus on this one thing, but um, fucking hell, I did, I tried, I did Ritalin for a while for the ADHD. It was too much like Coke for me. It was just a little bit too speedy and made me a little bit too horny. So I had to chuck that shit away. Yeah, I had the same. So many when I was in New York, because I was doing a lot of cocaine and it's so fun and I, I miss it dearly. Oh um, God, I fucking, I love it. I love it. It was my favorite. But I had so many <laughs> friends who would be like, they'd be like mm, I don't do cocaine, I don't do cocaine. And, and, and then later I found out they were all taking Adderall. So the first time I took an Adderall, all my friends were like, cocaine's like bad for you and I don't need that. I don't need that to have a good time. All the people that are on Adderall, I took an Adderall and I was like, I uh, hate to break it to you assholes. You're all on time release cocaine. Like you're yeah. doing cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Adderall is crazy because that's more difficult because you can't break it so like cocaine. And again, if you're listening, it's bad for you. Don't do it. Wink. But if you are going to do it, cocaine, that goes away. You, you can like get three to four thousand dollars a month fucking people and not feel bad about it. Correct. <laughs> and the high wears off after 20 minutes. So you can go to sleep. You can make yeah. a decision. <laughs> so I mean, many won't. ups to this. Joe, <laughs> uh, are, are you sober? Are you to do do cocaine? Are you? In uh, no, I'm not sober. <laughs> <laughs> I just no. eventually I expect people to come in here and like, yeah, I'm done with it. But no, no, I uh, <clears throat> I'm awake now, be not from cocaine, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm, <laughs> I'm in Jersey on the road doing I was doing a show and I, I drank after the show because I was stuck here for the night. And um, and so I couldn't sleep. And then I was found out that you guys were streaming. So anyway, thanks for having me. But uh, but no, not. Uh, not sober, but I, I do have to say, I think I might have I've been listening to. Is it is it is it Lane or Ian? I'm sorry, it, sorry. Either will do. The Americans always call me Lane and I'm happy with that. OK, no, his name's Ian. Stop it. Oh, OK. No, but Americans always call me Lane. I, I see uh, that and capitalize I, an L every time. Yeah, it's yeah you have so many eyes in your name. There's a lot your of eyes, too many eyes. One syllable. How many fucking yeah. vowels right. are there? I, mean, I apologize, guys. That's my that's my. Thank fault. you. Thank yeah. you. Yes. The more you're talking, I've been listening to you for a while. And the more you're talking, I'm like, I think I have what you have. Uh, the thing, the way you describe the way you enter into relationships that first three weeks, it's 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 that's been my pattern my whole life. And then you also, can go in and you're obsessed with them. And this is the one you're going to marry. And it's fucking yeah. the, the best love. Yeah. And then three weeks later, you're like, what am I doing? This is, yeah. the, you know, like and, it, and you're but you it's a switch that you feel like you have no control over. It's very odd. But my friends have made fun of me for that for 20, 30 years now, like 30 years, 20 years. But like they're like, oh, let me guess, she's she's awesome, and you're probably gonna marry her. And I'm like, no, no, it's different. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And like, and you believe it every time. And Joe, then can I also, ask you two questions? Sorry to yeah. interrupt. Go on, you go on. No, and I was gonna say, and also what you and Wendy were both saying, cocaine. I've always loved. I hate downer drugs. I hate anything um, uh, psychedelic or whatever because it takes me too into my head. I've always loved Coke because it helps me focus. And I've told my doctors that they've said, they've said, why do you like it? And I say, because it makes me want to engage with people. It absolutely, it helps me lock on and talk to people and feel, it makes me feel like the way I assume most people feel all the time in public, like they want to chat and stuff. So it's just very interesting hearing both of you talk about this stuff. Yeah. Let me Joe, ask you I'm, to I'm friends with you. I didn't want to catch up. You're you. You got a little touch of the something in your head because you're buddies. <laughs> Anyone who gets along questions. with me and like we can hang out is for sure like should absolutely be on medication. <laughs> I want to test if you're ADD, ADHD. Two questions. Sure, do you sure. do you um, are you able to recognize people's faces? And when someone else is talking, are you already thinking of the next thing you're going to say? I am. A, I am able to recognize people's faces. I don't I don't have the thing. You know, I know there's that condition where people literally can't see face. It's not like that. But I'm terrible with faces and I'm terrible with with uh, to the point that I have anxiety where I'll see somebody and I'll think it might be somebody I know. And I can't 
I'm not sure. And I'm too scared to walk up to them to say hi. And I'm too scared yes, not to, because it's going to look like I'm shutting them or whatever. So that, and then what was the second one? Sorry. The, when, um, if someone else is talking, <laughs> yeah, do you forget the second question every time? Someone yeah. else is talking and you're not really listening. You're thinking of the next thing you're going to say. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm going to take that answer as a no. The stuttering, like, uh, 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 okay, that's a hard no. You had no idea what the fuck you were going to say. Right. What were you I saying? A, what was the question? I have a hard time being in the moment. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, and yes, it's not necessarily that I'm thinking of the next thing I'm going to say. It's appreciating and listening and absorbing what the other person is saying. I'm not. Catherine, do you want to diagnose him? <laughs> <laughs> you got to ask him about the hubbub. That's that's a real. If you're one. in a room, right, and there's hubbub, you know, and there's like noise going on in the background, can you hear what the other person says? Can you focus and hear it? Not yes, well. man. <laughs> is, this, is, this all, is this all ADD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was the one for me. We used to laugh about it. I'd be in a, in a restaurant or a bar or something with Catherine and she'd speak and, I, and I'd be reading her lips and I'd go, I can't hear because of the hubbub. And we'd laugh about it. It's a symptom, Joe. You're ADD. Wow. All right. Thank you. And good that to see beautiful. you. That is beautiful. Hey, Joe. Glad you checked in. Yeah. When you send this video clip to your doctor to get Adderall, <laughs> Will you mail me some? I will Venmo you. Oh, <laughs> I'll take it and drive down there. I'll drive. Yeah, do it. Yeah, come to Austin. Come through, do it. TikTok this sounds healthy. ADD. Yeah, <laughs> TikTok, the ads for Adderall, they will give you it because I, I don't like scroll through TikTok to look at it. I, I'm on there. I have a decent amount of followers. And so that's kind of my main outlet um, mm -hmm. because. But anyway, so I'm when I go on there, I'm on there so I'm frequently scrolling like for 30 minutes to like look at the trend before I post something, but they will give you ads and all my ads are for ADHD and the company's called Done. And the, the first round of ads will be someone like, I can't focus, but I never click on the ad. And finally, the most recent one I got, the company's called Done and it was just two pictures of like giant pills. And I was like, <laughs> this, this is, you're just you're just selling me drugs. Right. <laughs> just, it was so just funny. like two orange pills. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> started to shake. I, I broke my phone. I tried to chop it up. I was like, oh, it's a screen. I thought it was two really big pills. But you know what? You know what's wild is that um, the so really quick, the the, the hearing thing. Um, one of the guys I work with uh, it just said to me the other day, he was like, you got to get your fucking hearing checked, man. Jesus Christ. You can never hear what anybody's saying in the bar. And I was like, I. I go, I don't know, man. It's I guess it's age, but like I just there's if there's anything playing, I can't fucking hear anybody. But then I then when I'm alone, I'm like, there's nothing wrong with my hearing. I don't understand. So that's wild. And then Wendy also like when you're talking about the pills, um, I remember I was in a writer's room uh, on a pilot in, in L.A. and I was I got a prescription to Vyvanse from my doctor because he was like, if you want, because I asked for Adderall and he goes, Vyvanse is a little better. It's not as hard of a crash or whatever. He gave me Vyvanse. And on the days when I took Vyvanse, I was like incredibly productive and so honed in and so good in the room. And on the days when I didn't take it, I felt lethargic. I felt like I couldn't tune in. I didn't know how I was going to get through the day. And I stopped taking it because I was like, this is fake. And, and it, it felt like it didn't feel like Coke, but it felt it felt fake because I knew synthetically I, or, or normally I didn't feel that way. Right. Well, and it's wild. I remember the first uh, I date. This is back in New York. I dated. I dated a guy, this lawyer who was in his 60s. I, I dated him and, uh, <laughs> for just for emotional support, just for right. emotional support. And also I had a, an apartment on the Upper East Side um, that needed rent paid. And I was like, do you take drink tickets? And they're like, no, I was like, God damn it. And I can remember he had so much Adderall. And so I would, and he had the knockoff. So it said amphetamine salts. And I was like, this is fucking wild. And he would oh. he would take so much of it. And I remember one day I was like, you this this is kind of scary because I mean, it's like it's meth. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I think he's probably talking shit on cocaine and I was probably on coke. And so I was like, cocaine is the best. And you're also on drugs. And he tried to tell me, he's like, no, 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 I have ADHD. And I was like, but do you? And he's like, yeah, I need it. Because the other day I woke up, I didn't take my Adderall and I fell asleep at my desk. And I had to be like, that's not ADHD. Hmm. You're addicted to meth. <laughs> like <laughs> if you stop taking it and you do a big night night at your desk, <laughs> you're coming down off of meth. <laughs> it's very you can tell. Yeah, it's it's a wild. You know, it's interesting. Microdosing mushrooms. I found 
it, I, I like that the very best. If I have to pick something, I like to microdose mushrooms. That gives you a little bit of sparkle, like these string lights. And there's mm-hmm. not uh, there's not a come down or a hangover from it. Whatever happened to prayer? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? This these last 15 hours, it's been a real roller coaster. I started thinking based on what people are saying, maybe I have ADD, but but I don't have any. I, I can hear people fine uh, when it comes to faces. I immediately know if you ever did me wrong or if I like you. That comes up <laughs> right away. Now, I, I, those I are the know. two categories, by the way. See, you did me wrong or I like you. <laughs> that's how, that's uh, I, also what it takes to pass to be Keith's friend. Did yeah. you not do me wrong? Sure. You're invited to Super Bowl party. Yeah, I li- I do listen to people when they talk, see if they're going to fuck up. I don't know. I don't think I have it. What else are you going to keep score if you don't listen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Keith, did have you has anybody ever told you this? This is this is driven me, cra- dri- driven me, drove me, whatever. OK, uh, yeah. crazy. Since I've known you, since I've known you. Yes. In the back of my head, whenever I heard you talk, I was like, who is that? Like his voice is identical to somebody. And I, I love this game. It happens every so often. People are trying to catch why Keith talks like that. Go ahead. Joe. And I hope it's like Vern or something. You know? No, it's Mr. Lipman from Seinfeld. It's Elaine's boss. It's it's he's not a big character. He's only in like six episodes. But it's Elaine's. It's the guy that catches George having sex on the desk with the cleaning lady. Yes, and he says yes. Yes, oh. and his most famous his most famous scene is he's sitting there and he goes, "It's come to my attention that you had <laughs> sexual intercourse with the cleaning lady on your desk." And when he's saying it, every time I hear him saying that, because I've watched Seinfeld over and over and over again, I I'm just like, watched the whole thing again. Now it's so funny. I'm like, I should know this character. I know who you're talking about. Uh huh. Yeah, he's also the guy where he's like. Remember, he's like, he's like where he's like, Elaine, you're a Baltimore fan, right? And he's like trying to get her to bring the cap to the game or whatever, because she got kicked. Out. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Every I'm time glad I you got out. First of all, first of all, I don't know if I like to hear that more or that I look like Vincent D'Onofrio more. It's hard to say, but I do appreciate you sharing that. You oh, my like God. Every time you I would watch have- it, it would drive me crazy because I'd be like, who the Fuck is does Mr. Lipman sound like? And then tonight I finally <laughs> put it together. <laughs> so much is coming together for Joe tonight. <laughs> right, well, I know I had something. And if it's not ADD, it's this fucking voice. Great voice. Well, it's a great voice. That's oh, great I voice. just looked up Vincent D'Onofrio. Um, who cares? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gives a shit. He's not he's not known as Mr. Hand. He's not going to win people all over the year. Holy shit. <laughs> that, that's incredible, man. What? I, who Vincent D'Onofrio? I have no idea who oh, he is. But he's good looking. He's good he's looking. Gr- he plays like a scary guy in a lot of movies. Yeah. He's, he's a beautiful guy. All right. Thank you. Well done, Keith. You're a beautiful that's guy, right. Keith. I don't want to I want to lick well that head. Man. You yeah, lick you're it. like you're like a hot well Mr. Done. Lippman. <laughs> I'm lick your head and rub my balls on it. Whoa. Can I rub my balls on your head? Oh, my goodness. I He's see, asking for consent. What can I we want, say? Yeah. <laughs> I listen, what, I'm a white middle aged guy. There's nowhere we for noticed. me to go and speak my mind <laughs> says to the microphone. <laughs> but you may have heard, Joe, we were uh, we were talking about if uh, the guests, if your exes got together and um, and described you, what would they all agree on? What are the pros and cons? How would they describe Joe DeRosa? I don't I, I, you know, I don't know. The one, the one thing is, um, I, I'm not a, I, I have not been a good uh, boyfriend or a successful boyfriend. I haven't had many long-term relationships for the reasons we discussed. But you, don't, you never I, recognize I, her face. I, can't, I don't. I can't That's a big one. The chase. I can't me. hear a word they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always thinking about what I'm saying next. <laughs> I'm yeah. constantly in search of drugs. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm so coked up the whole time. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. No. The uh, no, but I will say one thing. I, I the the women I date, I usually remain friends with them. So um, huh? I guess that's something. I have been able to get to a point with most women that I date that like or, or hook up with or whatever you want to call it, that, you know, it happens. It's not going to move forward, but somehow we remain like friendlier friends. So I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back. That's just the one thing that 
I've no, I've gotten, I've gotten, the reason I bring it up is because I've gotten grief about it sometimes from women I've dated where they're like, you have a lot of female friends and I can tell that maybe there's a history there with some of them and whatever. And so I'm often reminded like, oh, oh yeah, I do remain friendly with a lot of them. So I don't know. I guess that's good, right? That's good. Sure. I you don't know? know. I think it could be good or bad. What do you think these uh, new people are noticing? Uh, it's it I'm doesn't happen. Them. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen often with a new person I'm dating, but once in a while, it'll with with a more um, uh, you know maybe you get a, a bit of a more jealous personality. But I don't know. They could have a point. Maybe, maybe that I have. A, maybe I'm. Be, it seems that I'm being flirtatious with. I don't know. Are you? I don't know. I don't. Well, since think. since you're friends with your exes, you actually can be the most accurate about what your exes would say about you. What well, would what that you're friendly, but you don't want to commit. They would all. They would all 100 percent agree that I've major commitment issues. Um, a, a hundred, I, you know, and I could never deny that in any in any way, shape or form. Um, well, because yeah. don't the little things bother you? You're kind of Seinfeld in that. Speaking of Seinfeld, where I, I think it was the first time you were on. And for some reason, this stuck with me. And you and Keith agreed to this. This thing that if if a woman does that, you're dating, it's just annoying. This woman called you up. She's trying to get directions to the house. She's in a cab and, mm -hmm. you know, she's a little bit flustered. So and and you're like, take a right at whatever street. And she goes, what? And you're like, it's over. I don't need this attitude. <laughs> Fucking no reason. I'm trying to be helpful. Fuck this bitch. You know what? I'm going to send the cab back to her place. She won't even notice. She's so fucking dumb. <laughs> I remember the exact situation you're talking about. The exact situation. It wasn't it wasn't that it wasn't quite you're that, that's accurate what you're saying but it was a little more specific i said to her there's an overpass i was trying to explain to her to the, that she had to go right at this overpass and she was flustered and lost and then she goes she goes yeah what overpass joe i don't see one. and she kind of snapped at me and i was like all right well i'm trying to help you here you know what i mean like, <laughs> this is almost verbatim joe do you know that play it back <laughs> I just yeah. said what you said. Oh, oh. See, it's in my head. It makes sense. Of course. <laughs> There's an overpass. There wasn't a side. There was an exclamation point. I literally said right turn. It's not like <laughs> right. it's, what the fuck? But you left out the you left out the snapped at me part. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just an exhale. She kind of you know what I mean? She kind of snapped a little bit. But yeah, I, 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 it is the little it is the little. I agree. I agree. Do you ever do you ever snap? Because I, I understand some people don't respond like that at all. They don't have that mechanism that kind of gets irritated out loud. But don't you? Oh, yeah. But you're allowed every three seconds. <laughs> oh, so it I can only be to, one person. In I the try not to do it to the per a person, though. Internalize it. That's that's the healthiest way to do it is when you're <laughs> yeah, in it. Yeah. I snap, but I, I'm constantly I, yelling at myself and other people in my head, which right. is well, there's hubbub there in here all the time, which is why I cannot hear any fucking thing. If we <laughs> if we were at, let's put this if we were out on a date and I, I would not snap at you, you now you might see me snap at a cab driver or something. But oh, so you're not punching me. You're punching the wall next to me. Well, let's punching. Let's not. <laughs> oh. yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like I would never I was offended not because, oh, she snaps. I was offended like, well, you're this is like our first date. And you're kind of snapping towards me. Listen, this I'm actually not. not I'm, I promise you I'm not judging. I think I need to do a little bit more of that. I think when I hear even that minimal snapping, it should red flag the situation. So I'm really not saying that you're being no. petty, but I do yeah. think like. I wonder if that's happening in other ways also like, oh, did you eat your peas one at a time Ugh. or, oh, you know, like, oh, yeah, it's it's that, you know, it's it's, I, you know, we've t it's fun. It's it's funny because we you and I you and I on this podcast, I haven't been on in a while, but we've talked a lot about relationships. When I've come on and I, I have learned a lot from talking to you specifically 
Okay, you Kevin, not that, Keith. Right. No, you're quite clear <laughs> unnecessarily. <laughs> For once, uh, everyone knows who Joe's looking at at Zoom. <laughs> he could be, he's probably looking at himself. Really, right. I learned from myself. But yeah, <laughs> let me be cordial here. I'm in public. <laughs> but yeah, no, I've learned a lot from speaking to you uh, on the show about dating and stuff. And uh, but yeah, it's because, yeah, I do have these. It's I don't know if it's a if it's a if it's a safety mechanism to get out. I don't know if it's a fear of commitment. I don't know now if it's ADHD. I don't know what it is. But, yeah, I will take small things and they will they will snowball in my head. And I can't you know, I can't like if somebody refers to themselves in the third person, forget it. I can't. (laughs) Well, that's mental illness. That's crazy. (laughs) I can take bipolar, but this. Yeah. Right. We don't have to put up with all mental illness. Right. <laughs> you draw a fucking line somewhere. If you're going to be beings. crazy, be like the fun kind. You know what I mean? Like, let's fucking let's well, let's drink and drive in a race car. Let's do something cool. Uh, isn't, <laughs> isn't that funny, though? Because, Wendy, I think you would relate to this. Like you, you like somebody referring to themselves in the third person it, to so many people be such a passive dumb thing. Right. But then to somebody like me and I'm assuming you, it, it's like. You no, know, for it's, Joe, it's, it's someone referring to himself as a third person is crazy. So for <laughs> no. Joe, I Joe doesn't like it. <laughs> but I would date somebody that was on, you know, I would date somebody. I, yeah, bipolar exactly. wouldn't freak me out at all. I'd be like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, that wouldn't. But but I don't know. The littlest thing. Well, I don't know. Yeah, no, the else? third person thing. I will say this, and it's whatever. We didn't have sex, so it doesn't count. Um, and, and because you're talking about like, oh, Joe, what would your exes say? Joe and I went on a few dates in L.A. This was years ago. Um, yes. We went out. We met uh-huh. and we went on a few. Yeah. And I will say and I've told this story to a couple friends uh, because it's like there's so many horrific stories about specifically male comedians being like monsters and like um, like, you know, just like forcing sex on people and sexually harassing them. Right. Part of the reason that I am still as far as so I can speak as someone who went on a few dates with you um, like romantically. The reason that we're still friends is because you were always cool and honest you were right. never there was never any like what's going on you're you're very open and honest about like i like you i'm seeing other people i, I have a commitment thing and i had been um i think celibate for like almost a year because i'd broken up with um my boyfriend at the time who's now dead uh rest in peace sean rouse very funny comedian yeah but yeah. I you were the first person i went out with after that breakup and i remember we were watching tv at your place in la and we're like, we're watching some movie and then kind of making out. And then I was like, oh, I, I don't feel comfortable having sex. And you said, OK, I'll sleep on the couch and you can sleep in my bed like the And I, I'm like, Joe's the, every time I'm like Joe's the nicest person, because that's as a woman. And what that's a how low the bar, bar is. for men. I know <laughs> the, bar men, the bar hey, for the bar. I'm not ready is. to have sex. OK, OK, um, sounds good. Where do you want to sleep? I- the bed or the couch? I would do then, that, but that's because I'm terrified of sex. If if the woman says I don't want sex, fucking wonderful, because the terror, the pressure. Joe's smiling. I don't know if you're identi- The pressure to you know to do it and all of that. And can I say one thing? In this hour, we've been here twice. I've heard mention of uh, are, are you dating exclusively? And you know, in that story, Joe was seeing other people. Catherine, maybe I'm. I mean, I am old. I'm nearly fifty. But that that does not happen in the UK, does it, Kath? Oh, it does now. Was it? They do that now. Yes, Dirty yes. fucking bastards. They're on the apps. They're 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 they're. Stacking and they will them up. say, "I'm seeing, I'm seeing more than one person." Will they say yes. that? Yes, Ian. It's oh. 1995. So. It's cool now. Yeah, Catherine's about to have Americans a second now. life. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> they, they, I think that we're dating more like the Americans. When we were kids, right, we used to watch oh, American TV and people would be going on dates. You go, what is this dating? Because we didn't. You kind of, the, the, do you like that boy? Do you fancy that boy? Okay, well, that's probably going to be it then because they're the one that's available. What have we, we done? Cast the net that far. And also, like the whole online dating thing was just for weirdos, right? When we were. When it started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Sure. Ian is not happy with this situation. <laughs> he needs to get with the program. Ian is oh, not a happy don't. bunny. I want to. I want to compliment Wendy back uh, because Wendy was also when we hung out was very honest and very. You were very. It was very put it put it all on the table. It was a really great. Um, 
So, Joe, what right, do you I, fucking I, need? Everyone that you did is so great that you want to be best friends with them. But I won't do that. <laughs> no, no. The night I the night I asked Wendy out, you went on stage and you were telling a story that you're like, you're like, so I had a breakdown and I shaved my head and I sailed around the world and you came off stage. And I was like, I remember I go. You seem fun. We should hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You're like, okay, I am pretty fun. And we we hung out. And I, it was like, I just like the 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 just complete honesty transfer. So why did it end? I never understand why these fun things. Because this end. bitch wouldn't give up her pussy. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and I was speaking about oh. myself in the third person. This bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, it's where people are at at the time, you know. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. All right, I'll never know. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun. We got Mexican food and got donuts. Like, but that's the thing is, you Good. just go like, it's one of. It's, but I think it's it's interesting to be honest. There's a thing where a lot of people are like, oh, if you can't commit, it's because you're immature. But I was like, well, no. If you know what you want, what you're looking for, I think that's a sign of maturity. If you can be like, look, I like you, but like this is not really popping off in this way at this time. But we could still be friends and. And who knows? I, you know, I'm a person. I don't know. If Down the road, ever... we might get married. I know. Yeah, I've been knows? thinking about it every day. <laughs> <laughs> Here's this is wild. I was dating somebody recently and th twice on the second and third dates, she brought up to me. I find her to be a red flag that you have never been in a relationship that's longer than nine months. And the first time nine she, months is a long time. I thought so, too. She brought it up three times. The first time I was like, ha ha, all right, whatever. Second time I was a little like I've you know, now I've got a pin in that because she's mentioned it twice. Third time she said it was third date and she was divorced. And I said, mm -hmm. what, I go, what is the red flag here that I don't have a, a multi-year relationship that ended in shambles like you do? <laughs> like, like that makes you better than me? Because it's like, how dare you judge me on that? You know, like that's a she's very actually odd... going to she's probably going to keep asking you until you agree that, yes, that is a red flag and you are right to worry about this. And here's the reason why you don't have to worry. But that that's not actually the answer. But she'll keep dropping it because it's passive aggressive. Hey, mm -hmm. don't you think that you're a piece of shit because of this? And you're like, ah, that's funny. OK, I could see me. I could mm -hmm. see where you come from. And and you swat it off. And the next time she brings it up, maybe it's a, it's like, oh, neither here nor there. This cup is green. Why are you never in a long term relationship? <laughs> <laughs> you can keep asking in different ways. But until you answer in the way that she's trying to get you to answer. Unfortunately. How long did you how long were you dating her? Three weeks. So she nose. was fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was scientific. I thought it was just a turn of phrase. <laughs> uh, no, I, but I, I, I bring it up because not to talk about my situation, but to talk about how I just think it's interesting that there are people. There are a lot of people out there as we talk about transparency and Put put the put the warts and all on the table, and it's a, I find that to be an attractive quality. Mm. But there are people out there that don't think that way, and in fact will judge you based on, you know, almost like you didn't soldier through something like I did, you know, uh, that didn't end up working for me anyway, and somehow that's a barometer for them to 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 feel superior to you. I find it very strange. It's, Do you think that maybe it's a um, and I think it is that, too, but it's also the fear of I'm about to be this thing that you do. Can you tell me how that's not going to happen? And so I'm going to sure. ask you this question, like, don't you think that's weird? But what I'm really asking is, can you can I be different? in this way? Like, do you already see a difference? Do you see yourself breaking the habit? Am I the one sure. or am I about to go through your cycle? And you're like, oh, seems sure. like it. <laughs> no, I, I think that's an extremely valid point. I think it's a great point. But but it, it it's always irked me that the um, inverse of that is not allowed. You if you say to some it's OK for somebody to say that to you. But if you say to somebody, you're one of these relationship types. Quite frankly, I find you clingy. That's like, how <laughs> dare you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you creep me out a little bit because you seem to want to go right into a commitment. And it freaks me out. You can't say that. to It's insulting. And it bothers me that one's OK to criticize, but the other one isn't, I guess. But it doesn't mean that what you're saying is invalid. It's very valid. I get why somebody might be hesitant, you know? I mean, I don't I don't I don't even think that I'm saying she's right or you're right or anything. I'm just saying, know. like. 
everyone's coming from if you're coming from vulnerability, you can't tolerate tolerate it. Then you're just going to project something onto another person so that they can respond in a reassuring way. But it doesn't always yeah. work. But no, we have no. Bianca Brady here and she's our relationship expert. Hello, oh, Bianca. Yeah. Good morning. That's me for sure. <laughs> That's my whole deal. <laughs> she's going to diagnose everyone. Fix your problems. Here we go. Hi, Bianca. Bianca's Hi. a trooper. It is 615 a.m. Yes. Yes. She good has morning. Leukemia. I do. Yeah, oh, I yeah. do. <laughs> Yeah. So is that amazing? You know, two bad that. things about right now. It's six years <laughs> <laughs> and I have cancer. No, uh, but look. I only have a little bit of leukemia right yeah. now. Keep okay. I had, a, so, I had a bone marrow transplant last year, so I'm pretty much over it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're just well, waiting for the donor cells to continue their work, proliferate a bit more um, and then hopefully next biopsy. That's a wrap on the old kooky Lukey. You're done milking it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've been done milking it, Keith. I don't uh... Bianca, I've just met you. So forgive me if this is cunty. It's 515 where I am. I'm in Texas. You say you're not milking it, but like you're wearing a beanie. You know what I mean? So it's like you're a little oh bit, my God, a I little bit embarrassed <laughs> that I have short hair. Your hair's yeah. cute. That's a regular look. <laughs> I hate it. This is the longest my hair's been in years, and I'm ready to shave it off. Your, well, the, your hair looks great. Do you, do you um, one of us have... has a choice, and the other one had to do it because they were getting their blood transfused. And also, <laughs> Keith is like, are you done mixing it? And he loves it. He's like, hi, this is my friend Bianca. She's wonderful. She's you. hilarious. She has leukemia. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's it's like your credit. I think it's because mm -hmm. Keith heard that, like, one in five people have cancer now. So he's like, all right, you're one, you're two. <laughs> I got my buddy. Elvis. How many are in like this guys? room right now? And can yeah. I tell you, I thought he was joking and you can put your hat back on. I was fucking with you. Obviously, <laughs> Your hair's cute. Now I feel like and I feel like an asshole. I'm like, I was trying to make a joke, but uh, no, you're well, right. Joe though. I mean, not call, you for a reason. called me right where I am because I, I definitely <laughs> was like, you know, I'm going to be on camera. Got to get my hat on. <laughs> I wear and that's I why I put these glasses on to hide the bags under my eyes. <laughs> I only I don't go out with my cancer hair because I get so like, ugh. and, you know, there are certain hats, too, that are like, no, that's a cancer hat. Like, you know, <laughs> your does it, your, <laughs> your does aunt it is your aunt is giving you this hat and you're like, mm. No, it's too much of cancer hat <laughs> where it's like crocheted by your aunt. And it's just like, yeah. <laughs> it's like a yeah. heart with tears. And you're like, I feel like maybe something more upbeat. I like something more upbeat. <laughs> when my mom, when my mom, hospital. <laughs> when my mom had cancer, she didn't lose her hair in the end, but Aww. she was in the hospital. And um, is that sad because she kept her hair? She went, but they would bring around the wig man would come around and the wig man would go around the ward and he'd say, we have, we have the, and cause it was national health service wigs. Yeah, they were that's fucking nice. shit. It was nice. He was a nice guy, but the wigs were shit because they were mm -hmm. from, you know, the right. NHS and you have this wig and have this wig and stuff like that. She didn't lose her hair in the end, but, um, I'm guessing you don't. Do you ha do you have a wig man over there? I guess you have to go. You have okay. to go and pay for it. Well, here's the thing about a wig. So your dermatologist will write you a prescription for a cranial prosthesis, which you can submit to your insurance company and they will okay. pay for a wig. Wow. However, they will not pay for a human hair wig. They will only pay for a synthetic wig, Yeah, yeah. which to some people might be acceptable. But to me, yeah. I'm not stepping out with a synthetic wig. God, no. Um, God, Christ, no. I'd rather wear a thousand cancer beanies. I'd rather die. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have cancer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no, it I, out. <laughs> I, and I went to like a wig maker and I went and like, you know, because before you lose your hair, you have all these things of like, OK, like I have to have a plan about my hair because, you know, if I don't have hair, I'm, you know, not a woman and, you know, I'm I'm dead. So <laughs> I what good what the, use are you? Yeah, right. I went to the wig maker and she was like this old lady and she was like, well, there's not enough time. 
Like it, like, you know, when people talk about getting a wedding dress too close to the event and the dress person is always like, we'll never be able to make the alterations. <laughs> She's like, you're going in for your transplant in January. <laughs> There's not enough time to make this wig. I was like, OK, um, I guess like I only it. I only have time for the bangs. Yeah. So if you want to have like a really nice Mariah Carey bang, I can yeah. do that. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to skip it. I shaved my own head before I went in because it's like the type of thing where you do. You get blasted with chemo. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't want to hear they make those sound effects now because it's like yeah. people are used to video games. So. Well, for yeah, to make it fun. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's then like a t-shirt gun <laughs> of chemo. Like, that sounds <laughs> so I I just, you know, I took it off myself and then I was like, I'm I guess I'm just a hat guy now. Uh, but there are these cool hats with like a baseball hat with hair. Oh, fucking <laughs> yes. I like want long. Me. And so I might get one of those, but really <laughs> The only reason I want it is for like the party trick effect. <laughs> <laughs> like if there was a child yeah, sure. in the room and I could be like, Ta -da. you're in a restaurant. <laughs> May I take your hat? <laughs> <I'll Yeah. fuck. laughs> hey, no hats at the table. <laughs> and then it, and then I just have to I have like a cousin it situation. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm waiting for it to grow in the meantime. It's not growing very fast and it sucks. So, but you know what? Being alive is great. But at least you, you look good in hats. I'm not able to wear caps. It looks horrible. You oh, ever see yeah, Vincent D'Onofrio with a cap? No, of course <laughs> it, it doesn't fit at all. So at least you have that going. You know, I have a wig question. Yeah. Aside from the obvious answer, what's the thing about a synthetic wig versus the real hair that would that makes you say I would never wear the synthetic? Does it look obviously fake compared is to there the only one obvious answer for that bianca please don't choose the one obvious one and uh work around that please no Those are your I'm, parameters. I'm sure that they have great synthetic wig options yeah, no offense to the synthetic community i'm sure you're it's working just, hard you still gotta <laughs> do the same amount of work as a real hair it's just like the type of thing where um if it's not gonna be great i'm not gonna do it mm. you know if it's if it's okay. gonna look a little cheap I'm not gotcha. gonna do that. Yeah. What do they say? Go big or stay home. So <laughs> Wendy this, right? gets it. We're in. Well, I have ring light gang. Oh. Yes, ring light gang. And now I feel weird. I feel like I'm like appropriating uh, like cancer culture because I've shaved my head multiple times and I have a bag of wigs. So I feel like a real cut. So I was like, I have a bag of synthetic wigs. I'm looking oh my God. at people are feeling guilty for the weirdest <laughs> fucking shit lately. <laughs> like, guys, I feel bad because I have fun with makeup and it's like, uh, why do I want to be? Oh, do, oh, should, but I give also, the, should I give it to the homeless? Oh, my God. Why do I have I makeup? bought because with TikTok. So I have wigs because I'm mentally ill and I love wigs. Um, that's a, that's the first thing that's out of the gate. I have a mental illness and I put wigs on in the middle of the night for fun since I was a kid. But on TikTok, I'll do like characters because I was alone in an attic for a year. And so I have like bald men caps. I have fake mustaches. I fucking eat that shit up. Bianca, have you considered the fake mustache? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> Yes, if it's not real. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's real hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, well, I, I like it to look a little cheap. It's fun when it's a little cheap. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I have to say goodbye to some people. Lane Lee. So good seeing you. <laughs> Catherine Boyle. Always. Thank you, Vincent. Thanks, guys. <laughs>